This is my 2016 Citroen Arena. It's riddled with faults. It's bad. So far, we have replaced the broken wing mirror in a very, very clock DPM. This has been the most troublesome issue that I've been having with this vehicle right now. The question is, would we manage to fix it? Or are we forever going to be on limp mode? If you think we're done, you must be smoking. So coming up. We're going to see if our repairs have been successful. Later on, we're going to be repairing something very unexpected. Be very ready. You're going to hate this van even more. Scrap it. So, here's how the story goes. Me and John went for a test drive to find out if all is well with the van. Let's go for a test drive! In which it was. There's no black smoke. Look at that. I've never ever managed to reach 60 here. That's how clean the DPF is. We ain't got a struggle anymore. The day after, we were en route to High Wycombe for a diagnostic job when all of a sudden, what? I felt the clutch pedal vibrating. This could only mean one thing. Hey John, Yo. the clutch pedal bro is vibrating quite heavily bro. Diff clutch to press. It's diff it, yeah, it's difficult to press down and bro. I think the clutch is on its way out bro. Whoa, that's another one on the list isn't it? Not again. So I told John that we're scrapping all the plans and we're fixing this clutch. A few inches later. Good night mate. Right, so this is an answer for one of the oil leaks in the car. Massive, isn't it? So let's us get to it and we're gonna go, we're actually gonna go to a curbside garage today. As you can see, it's raining and it's so bad. So let's not stand in it. Let's get going. I would like to say thank you to Curbside Mobile Mechanic for letting us use his unit for the day. Without him, we would be soaked, but we only have a few hours, so let's get started before he kicks us out. Oh yeah! So the last video, the BMW video where I broke loads of stuff, well, guess what? <laughs> Halfords claimed for free. So that's what I like about them. Free tools, pretty much. Just not their repairs. Just not their repairs, yeah. Am I even surprised that this van just keeps on failing? No. Do I have a choice but to fix it? Yes and no, but we're gonna fix it anyway. Someone's gonna inherit this van, so yeah, we have to get it working properly before we give it to them. How far along are you? The nerves are kicking in. If we can't finish fixing this van on time, we would have no other way to get back home. At best, this job can take two hours, but knowing this van, it could take more than a few hours. Fingers crossed it doesn't give us a hard time. Alright, so the first thing that we've got to do, obviously, is we have to take the gearbox out, that's the first thing. But to go through all that, you have to take the boost pipe from the bottom and concentric slave, the starter, and all of that. So let's get cracking because we've got many bolts to crack. Many what? Bolts. I thought you said balls. Pause right there. If you want to find out how John got this massive blaster on his face, keep watching. Now that the ball joint for the control arm has been taken out from the knuckle, we can then start removing the passenger drive shaft. But first, we have to drain the transmission oil, otherwise, it will start pouring out from the drive shaft hole. Oh, that's black. Oh, look at this. Is this another sign of another trouble? Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, we're going bigger this than means other. that this is about to come out. After draining the oil, I noticed that the health of the gearbox is rather worrying. Is this going to be another big trouble for another day? Or shall I just scrap it? You're definite. No, I'm, I'm not, because I, I only had to hit it once. A little softy. I'm deaf. Hey! Oh, oh my, my day. God. God sake. It. Oh God's sake, John. <laughs> it's your fault. So dumb, John. Fuck's sake, Mike. What did you do? It's time to move on to the driver's side. Pretty much the same procedure as the passenger side, but with less hassle of having to take it out fully. Now, John is not a soft team. Are you ready, really? So, crash shafts are out. Oil drains. We need to take the gearbox bolts off. And we should be inside her. 
Inside her? Inside her. You're rude, bro. Uh, help? John is definitely losing it at this point. And so am I. I we are already two hours deep into this job and we barely scratch the surface. Where's curbside <laughs> when you need him? Look yeah. at this guy, what a plug. No, his curbside, that's curbside, that's curbside, that's curbside. That's curbside. There he is, coming in with the local fish and chips. Definitely needed. What an actual plug. I will be leaving his handles on all social media platforms in the description. Also, subscribe to him on YouTube at Curbside Mobile Mechanic. Now that everyone's filled up, time to get back into action. The first thing that I noticed as soon as I got back to stripping the van was another thing that needs to be done. This van is never going to give my pocket a rest. On a scale <laughs> of, <laughs> of what to shenish, how shenish is this? Yeah, look at that. That's done. Yikes. The further we open this van up, the more issues we find. First was the dog bone mount and now it seems like there is another issue that we have to deal with. It just seems like we're not going to make it home today. She's out. She's out and I can see oil leak. Where is that from now? Alright, let's see then. So what is that vibration about? Oh, so it's that, look. There you go. Oh no. Oh no. It was at this moment when I thought we're going to need more time here at Curbside's Garage. But unfortunately, it's not an option. The sleeve on the gearbox is broken and I can't seem to find anywhere that is available now and local to us. This is just getting worse and worse. This. Is that the gearbox code? Did you say? Yeah, 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 yeah. At this one? point, it's already been an hour and a half and we still can't seem to find a motor factor that is local who can provide us with the part that we need until... <laughs> they, they have it! They have it! <laughs> For whatever reason, I've called the same place with a different result. I guess you just have to talk to the right person. So that has arrived. Here we go. Here's the piece of equipment that we are waiting for. So come, come, come. Check a look. Check a look. Check a look. You see this cone right there? So if we have a look on this thing, where's the new code? There. That is the cause of the vibrating pedal. This is what I would call Shenish. There you go, so that's that. Put the new one in there, and that should be us. Go, yeah! How unfortunate that we had to wait. What's that, 45 minutes? Yeah, probably more like an hour, hour and a half. Oh my God. Look, look at the state of this bearing. So you can see there's a flat spot and then there's that piece, right? But this is the new one, this is the old one. You can see there, it doesn't even have the bump anymore. And also, that is not in a good state. But yeah, this one is good. LUK stuff. We love LUK, <laughs> don't we, Kirby? Oh, yeah. We like LUK except they're slave cylinders. Am I gonna have a good time driving with this van again? Is my clutch gonna be light again? We'll see. What are you? Support it at the back, Tom. I'm getting crabs, I'm getting crabs. Getting crabs. <laughs> <laughs> hold, 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 hold. 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 Good, Justin. Hold. Push up on the back, push up on the back. Here we have another mechanic giving us a hand because the engine mount seemed to have popped out of place and we can't line up the gearbox mount properly. Again, more issues. It's not something that we want at 6 pm, but we are slowly getting there. I can't see anything. I'm seeing triple bolts. Unfortunately for John, something very unfortunate happened. We were prying down the control arm and the pry bar hit his face. Not worryingly deep. We will soon get an update from him. For his fans, Yes, he is absolutely fine. Lips. That's what happened to our face. Ah. Have it taken too long? If this van still doesn't start, everyone's walking home, mate. Uh, if it doesn't start. Yeah. Do you know what? Here is that. So that is the uh, clutch done. Now, what we have to do next is we still have to do the intercooler after John got injured. So. Let's put the vehicle down for now and then we'll go and get the intercooler. Let's go. 
That took us, we started at one, so that took us six hours, but it shouldn't have taken that long. We obviously had to call people up to get the cone for the gearbox. And also we had to wait for them to get here. And that took probably an hour, an hour and a half in total, give or take. We also ate, chatted, and obviously the filming and stuff like that. So realistically that job should have taken two, two and a half hours, I would say. But yeah. Arr. That being said though, it's not about how quick it is. This van is a project pretty much. It's everything is broken, so what's next? Turbo? Engine? Maybe. <laughs> how soft is it? Is it the floor. F off, don't lie. You're chatting sh <laughs> God's sake. It's soft in it. It's alright. I think I think it'll be fine. As long as it can get from here to out of there. <laughs> I don't mind. You know what, yeah? As you heard, curbside wants us out as soon as possible, so let's not waste any time. Is this van going to be taking us home, or are we going to be sleeping outside Kirby's unit? Let's find out. Here comes nothing. You won't want another van. What brand new? What brand new? What this? Brand new second hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is he gonna move? <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah, no, this van is so broken. That's a sign that the slave cylinder is also failing, which can be an after effect of the wobbling clutch pedal. Anyway, let's get out of here and hope that this van drives for an hour. Here is my review of the clutch. I think it does need the bleeding a little bit because I have to double press on the clutch for when I'm changing gears, it's only sometimes. So yeah, it's likely that it's got, it's got some air and it's bleeding because I'm bleeding. <laughs> because we disconnected it from the fork. So, and it was fully extended out. And also it could be that it's just self-adjusting because it's a self-adjusting clutch. We'll see anyway, we'll give it a few more tap and then we'll go from there really. Let's keep going. The following day. Now, it is actually time to remove the intercooler on this van. I don't know if you saw, but it is very, very blown. Like it's about to explode. I think there is a cause for that happening. That is probably the reason why my DPF, it's, it's also blocking. So let's, let, let's have a look, let's have a look. And as you can see right there, that is very swollen for an intercooler all the way over here and uh, that is the reason why we are replacing it so let's get started because we have a job to do i'm gonna run a time lapse on how to do it's just two eight mils on each side for the jubilee clip and then also we have the clips that holds on to it which is only a push fit anyway so we should be able to drop this in about five minutes let's go even though this job is easy to do it just adds on to the mountain of things that needs to be done on this van. All right, here you go. Here's a clearer view of what it looks like. This is just absolutely insane. So this happens for a number of reasons. One, you've got an overboost condition, which means that your turbo is either sticking or you have got a PCV issue. This van has been consuming oil like there is no tomorrow. And that could also mean that it's the turbo or the PCV. But the easier one to do for the time being is to replace the PCV and I do have a feeling that it's that because I am also getting a rocker cover leak which means that it is likely that it's stuck open that's why it's just creating so much positive air in the system so we'll have a look but for now we'll just replace the intercooler because we have a job to do and here's the damage you can see right there I am getting a really, really bad boost leak. Yeah, that's no good, is it? Look. Ah. Anyway, let's get the brand new part. And here is the brand new part. As you can see right there, the swelling, the difference on those two is absolutely mental. You can see it right there. That is how it's supposed to be. And looking at this, yeah, this one is like two seconds away from popping. I can't believe Ali can expand like this. It shouldn't, never should, but hey, there it is. My boost leak is coming from here for sure. So uh, 
let's get started let's let's fit it back in again finally i can sleep well at night knowing that my intercooler will stay intact for the following day right cool so that is us done for now on this mm -hmm. citroen relay so we have got a bit more to do we have got to obviously get that windscreen replaced asap because the crack is just expanding so wide and obviously we have to get it remapped as well so yeah man i think this is where i'm going to end the video for now so watch out for part three thank you very much for watching if you like to see more content like this please like share comment and subscribe and we will see you on the next one peace mm -hmm.